Some surprising developments at the U.S.-Mexico border. The number of migrant crossings has dropped significantly in the days since Title 42 expired. Just last week, border officials had seen record numbers of migrants trying to enter the U.S., but in the last three days or so, Department of Homeland Security officials say they've seen a 50 percent drop in migrant crossings. And joining us with more on this is former Texas Governor Rick Perry, who also served as Energy Secretary during the Trump administration. Uh, Governor, great to see you. Really appreciate it. Um, I know you had to deal with border issues as well when you were governor. Why do you think we're hearing about these lower than expected numbers so far? Yeah, before we start, uh, let's just wish every mother out there a happy Mother's Day. And, and uh, Absolutely. what a great day to reflect on how blessed we are to have some wonderful women in this world. So um, back to your question, uh, and, and listen, taking a snapshot in time uh, is a snapshot in time. Uh, this issue has been going on. As a matter of fact, I, I was digging around in my office. I don't know where you see this or not. This is a Homeland Security Committee uh, briefing book that I just happened to see on uh, my disheveled office in here. It's dated 2014, and we're dealing with the uh, field hearing crisis on the Texas border surge of unaccompanied minors. You remember that? That oh, was yeah. uh, nine years ago. So this has been going on for a really long time. Uh, we've had now three administrations that, that dealt with it. I'm very biased in my observation, as I think we had uh, uh, this issue in hand four years ago uh, with the programs that we had in place. The message was clear. It's not just a casual uh, walk across the border to get into the United States. And, and so um, I think you have to go back to some really strict uh, enforcement of the of the border. You have to have a system in place where you can allow for legal immigration. And you have to have these countries south of the border working with you. And I, I think we may have failed there more often than we were successful in, in getting these countries in Central uh, and, and Mexico, Central America and Mexico. So. Uh, there's a lot of work to be done, and we got a real problem on our hands, and we don't know who these people are, and that's the that's the real challenge. So, um, but we need to we need yeah. to come together. This this deal of standing in the circle and pointing to the left and saying it's their fault, we know how to do this. So uh, let's you know saying saying this is easier than it is to get it done. I recognize that, but uh, the Biden administration needs to get serious about uh, what's going on on the border. Well, and as you know, your state has been in the news a lot uh, over the last few weeks. Just last week, we saw that mass shooting in Allen, Texas, uh, one of a rash of massacres we've seen in Texas in recent years, including the tragedy in Uvalde just last year. And last week, I had to ask you about this because you served as governor of the state of Texas. A state house committee voted to raise the minimum wa uh, age, I should say, from 18 to 21 uh, to purchase an AR-15 style rifle, but that measure failed to advance. What do you think? Do, do you support raising that purchase age uh, in Texas? You, you and I are going to talk about an issue that really may have a lot more to do with that than uh, raising the age of whether someone can have a weapon. Uh, and that's this issue of mental health. Uh, and, you know, that is where we need to be focusing a lot. Uh, we need to make sure that uh, our schools are secure uh, and that we have the security around those schools. And that requires weapons. And uh, in the state of Texas, we're going to keep uh, the weapons. Uh, we're going to should be uh, increasing the amount of security that we have around places and people that we love. Uh, that's how you stop bad people with weapons, uh, not by raising the minimum age of when someone can buy a weapon. And let's talk about mental health. Um, I, I know that uh, this is something that you've been uh, working on when it comes to veterans. Um, you know, this issue of mental health has been an issue. Uh, in the veteran community for some time now. For several years, though, uh, I wanted to ask you about this. You've been an outspoken proponent for the legalization of psychedelic drugs uh, for therapeutic use. We're talking about things like magic mushrooms, as they're commonly called. Um, tell me why a conservative former Texas governor thinks that's a good idea. Yeah, 10 years ago, if you had said my name and psychedelics are going to be in the same sentence, I would have said you're crazy. But uh, there are a lot of things that have happened in my life that have uh, really changed my mind about it. Uh, you know, I grew up in the 60s. I was a total and absolute against uh, legalization of drugs, and I still am for the standpoint of recreational use and what have you. 
But these compounds, when they're used with the right dosage, well, obviously the right diagnosis first, right dosage, the right guiding through these, uh, uh, these experiences, and the follow-up, those four things together, and we're seeing some extraordinary benefits from them. Let me just give you one example up in New York in the VA. Uh, there's a Dr. Rachel Yehuda who's overseeing a program there. I think they have two phase three trials behind them now using MDMA, the old rave drug ecstasy. Uh, and the, the, uh, uh, the benefits of that, <clears throat> the results of those trials are stunningly good. For instance, and I'll try to be brief here, uh, they, three doses, two weeks apart, to these veterans who had post-traumatic stress symptoms, either depression, anxiety, sleeplessness, suicidal thoughts, or all four uh, in a lot of cases. After six months, after three uh, doses, 70 plus percent of those individuals had zero symptoms of post-traumatic stress. Uh, Jim, I, I don't know, you know the, to me that is stunning uh, results. It's one that we as a country uh, need to get behind. It's my understanding that the FDA is going to approve for taking off a of schedule one MDMA in the fall. I think that is very wise. I think the VA uh, is supporting that, and all Americans should. If you care about these kids' lives, uh, young men and women who put their lives on the line for us, uh, we were at war for 20 years, which was a whole other story, but uh, for 20 years they've been in combat, and to be able to give them their lives back after they literally put their lives on the line, and sadly, somewhere between 16 and 20 uh, are still committing suicide every day. Yeah. Um, we need to get serious about this. We've got some compounds uh, that we're seeing great results with, and I think that uh, Americans all across the board should educate yourself about it. I told you offline yeah. that this is kind of like nuclear power, uh, that, uh, you know, in the 60s, we were afraid of nuclear power and, and Fukushima and, and Three Mile Island, Chernobyl. And now we have small modular reactors that are walk away safe, and we need to be looking at them as our transition uh, for the new generation of clean energy, if you will, in this world, well, uh, I knew, rather I knew than some, you know, putting everything on renewables. And I knew you get some energy ideas in there, Governor, but let me ask you, I have to ask you about your former <laughs> boss, uh, Donald Trump, and, and this is something maybe you can help us out with. Back in 2021, CNN reported on a text message sent to Mark Meadows, the Trump chief of staff, on November 4th, 2020, the day after the presidential election. It said, here's an aggressive strategy. Why can't the states of Georgia, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, and other uh, Republican-controlled state houses declare this is BS, where conflicts and election uh, not called that night, and just send their own electors to vote and have it go to the Supreme Court? Uh, at the time, Governor, you, you remember this, a spokesman for you told CNN that no, you did not send that text. You were not the author of the text, but there were multiple people who confirmed to us that the text came from your phone number. Can you help us out with this? Did you send that text? And did you agree with the president's I, efforts I to overturn the election results? I didn't send it. And that's kind of the interesting thing. As a matter of fact, if you go back and look at the congressional uh, testimony, uh, the congressman who brought that up uh, said later, you know what, we're not really sure where this came from. I got called on it a couple of times. Number one, it's not my style of, of, of speak, so to, uh, or texting, so to speak. So um, again, there is a lot of misinformation out there, Jim, uh, and, and that, that was one piece of it. So uh, I can assure you that uh, uh, that didn't come from me. And let me ask you, uh, you once called Trump a cancer on conservatism. Uh, that was way back in 2015. Um, given what took place on January 6, uh, his efforts to overturn uh, that uh, 2020 election, do you think you were right back then? You know, uh, President Trump reminds people on a regular basis, even in cabinet members, that I said some pretty mean and ugly and nasty stuff about him, which I did. What? Uh, we play hardball and in, in, uh, uh, in our politics, and uh, but you know I got over it. He got over it. We worked together, and you know that's what you think people he need be the to do today. In 2024. Is, uh, you know I'm still trying to sort that out for myself. So uh, you know if he, he may get to hear me call him names again, who knows? I, it's it's still early in the process. So I haven't uh, written off that. Uh, 
You know, if you'll recall, I didn't announce for president in uh, 2011 until August, so we got a lot of time left. Well, so does that mean that you're thinking about jumping in? So I got your attention now, didn't I? <laughs> I think you did. <laughs> I'm not taking any magic mushrooms, I can assure you of that. <laughs> Well, you never know. You might have some uh, traumatic brain injury that you don't know about. So but let's no, just, but, let's, but let's keep it open. It's something you're thinking about. Listen, it's early in the process. I think for any of us to sit back and say, I'm for this person or that person is a little early in my process. So, uh, you know, it, it certainly is something that I haven't taken off the table. But, um, you know, the chances of it happening are probably a little bit slim. But uh, who knows? There's a lot of time left. And. Uh, we'll see how this all works out. All right, former Texas Governor Rick Perry, uh, thanks so much for your time.